back to Signature Sense. My name is Ryan, and today I am super excited to announce a head-to-head -head smell test with Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, homage to the Vintage Formula Brute Cologne. And then as you see, I have the Vintage Fabergé Brute Cologne. This is a scent that I am very familiar with. This is one of my go-tos. I absolutely am in love with it. I have a lot of experience wearing it. I know it very well. So this is going to be a very interesting experiment. This was considered to be, at one point, the most popular clone in the entire world, having been released in 1964. And I have a huge review video about Brute. If you want to learn all about Brute and all the, the commercials and the actors and who, who promoted this and its backstory and everything about it, go check out the video. I'll put a link in the description. For now, though, let's jump into this uh, Et 2. So Et 2 is Phoenix Origin Accoutrements homage the the note breakdown is exactly the same as what is listed on for Grantica for Brute and the reviewer the perfumer basically said that he's got a lot of love and respect for Brute he came through the door in, uh, of the classics through the Old Spice door but he's he loves and respects Brute he also notes in his write-up that his formula is related to the the vintage formulation and not so much as the the current modern watered down version so this is going to be really really awesome so let's jump into the smell test as always we're going to smell this out of the bottle and then on some paper first and i actually have two i have two testers today because we're going to do this both with these side by side and then we're going to smell some on the uh, bottle paper to get a baseline to see how this may or may not morph on your and my skin and then we're going to spray some on my skin i'm going to give you my feedback on its initial opening and then I'm going to put some on, I'm going to disappear, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to share my observations about the dry down stages, how it performs, how it projects, and then some of my thoughts. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so getting this bottle open here, I am really, really excited because, as I said, Brute is actually in my top three right now. I have Polo for Men, the Vintage Formula, the Cosmere and Warner. I have the Givenchy Gentleman, also the Deep Vintage that I wear, and then Brute. These are my three in my main rotation right now, so... I can't tell you how excited I am because Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, I've been so impressed with this house. If you haven't ch had a chance to check out my other videos from them, if you don't know about them, a really quick uh, summary is they use all natural ingredients from the oils down to the rose water. The, everything that they put in this is all natural stuff. And they create classic formulations, a lot of homages that were inspired by the likes of Brute, Old Spice, uh, etc. And then they have also originals as well. And I've been super impressed with them. So real quick, let's look at the note breakdown and see what we got going on for this to get an idea of what we're going to smell. So on the top, we have the lavender, anise, lemon, basil, bergamot with a heart of geranium, langylang, and jasmine all built on a base of the sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, oak moss, vanilla, and tonka bean. Now, if you're familiar with the original Brute, these are going to sound very, very familiar to you. And now if you've watched my past review video, you know that I have put this stuff as kind of like the Lang Ylang, the, that floral Lang Ylang is sort of the main player in Brute and what's being painted. And I love it for that. And so let's see what this has. So let's give it a smell out of the bottle. Okay. Really, really impressive. So what I'm getting out of the bottle is a beautiful talky lavender like smell so one of the reasons that i love brute is because it's it falls for me in that barbershop genre another reason i love brute is because even this stuff doesn't smell super synthetic like even if i contrast this against the vintage Schulten old spice formula that one smells still a little bit more synthetic than i than i like personally this smells very very nice it's elegant it's classy it's clean and i really love that barbershoppy vibe to it it's kind of like this floral uh, a very nice floral with a little bit of powderiness to it right this smells a little bit more powdery but yeah it's basically powder lavender and then you're getting that langy lang and a little bit of the florals coming up through maybe the jasmine is okay so real quick i'm going to go ahead and refresh my nose with the original okay so the main difference between the phoenix argent accoutrements and this one out of the bottle this one, the, that ylang ylang is way more pronounced. This one is more powdery and more um, almost a little bit more barbershoppy with the, the powderiness. It's, it's like a talky lavender. Both are very, very fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on paper and I'll come back and let you know. Okay, here we go. I have the Phoenix Origin Accoutrements and I have the Vintage Brute. Let me dive into the Phoenix Origin Accoutrements first and then we'll compare. Okay, so on the paper, the contrast 
so far is the powderiness that you get out of the bottle is toned down and what I'm getting on the paper is much more floral. This is a predominantly floral lavender uh, accord and the back end, the peripheral, has a teeny tinge of the basil, a little bit of the citrus, but it's basically a nice floral main accord with a little bit of a herbal, slightly citrusy bergamot back end. It's, it's, quite, it's very light, it's clean, it's crisp. It's got that Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements vibe, which is just super fresh naturals. And it's also not thick. So let me smell the, this is the Fabergé original. Now I also preface by saying that this is, this is an, a vintage bottle. So this is very, this is probably decades old. So the notes are gonna definitely change as what it probably was released as which I really like the vintage, they, they age, the, the ingredients kind of coalesce and some of the top may be different, but like the heart, the base, it's really that it kind of just congeals into this beautiful like aged juice. So because of that, maybe, and what I'm getting off the paper in contrast, this is much thicker. It's, um, but it's not synthetic. That's why I love this. There's, there's some beautiful naturals. If you haven't smelled the original Fabergé and you like Brut out of the store, the ones they're selling now, you will absolutely love this if you like natural smelling scents. So it's a very thick floral smell. The Lang Ylang, the Jasmine, that's really what you're getting hit in the nose with. Everything else is totally secondary, almost a non-issue. Now, when I splashed this on, you didn't see off camera, because the hole is much bigger in this, I actually got a massive splash as, a compo as compared to like a dot on this. So I am getting a lot more of the scent profile, but yeah, very strong uh, uh, oomph with a floral on this. It's like the Duranium Lang Lang Jasmine. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful smell. I absolutely love it. So now I'm going to go ahead. I already have the Brut decanted. Now I want to show you the juice. This is the Fabergé, very, very dark, brownish, and a little atomizer. And I'm going to go ahead and decant this other one into this bottle. Okay, give me a second. Okay, guys, so I have some bad news. I actually, while I was decanting the bottle, I spilled it all on my pants. However, I was able to capture a very, very nice, respectable amount of juice in my hand. And I have also some on the table. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna splash it on. Put some on my hand. Okay, so I have a nice, I was able to get a bunch of juice. I put a bunch on my neck. And then I also rubbed this nice smear in my hand. So I have enough to do a test with, plus I'm getting massive wafts off my pants. So I'm actually gonna let my pants dry as well. I'm actually gonna keep these pants on because why not? And then I'll see what I get from that. But I'm getting a huge in the air, a very nice uh, lavender type of floral. I'm getting actually more of the lavender off of the Phoenix Argent accoutrements out of the air than the Brut. The Brut, again, is that that ylang, ylang jasmine geranium kind of bomb in a, in a very masculine kind of way. It's almost a little bit unisex, but it's such a, it's grounded in masculinity, but this, let's talk about it. So really surprisingly, let me comment on this because this is remarkable. As opposed to the Fabergé, I'm getting a lot of uh, of the base that's noticeable. Like I don't, the, the Fabergé one, I don't really get the base very much. This one, I'm smelling the, the vetiver. I'm smelling the sandalwood, the vanilla tonka bean. The base is much more, it's almost like um, the original Fabergé Brut has a much thicker heart. The heart is, maybe it's because of this vintage uh, juice. It's so congealed or whatever. I wouldn't know because I wasn't born at that time, so I haven't had a chance to smell it while it first came out. But this heart is so thick and just powerful, potent. It's, it's like it almost takes over everything else. This stuff, you're getting the lavender, you're getting the top of the lavender, the lemon, the basil, bergamot, geranium, lang lang, jasmine. It's all there. And it's a nice fresh accord, but it's not overpowering the base. The base is allowed to shine and it gives it a very nice masculine round off. And it's fantastic. I have to say it's, let me put it this way. Uh, this is just the opening. So I'm going to spend some time with it, of course, and I'll give you more of my comments. But my initial reaction in summary to wrap this part up is, while this is not a one-to-one -to, -one to the vintage brute, and for this, again, could be because this is aged, congealed, etc. 
the, it's a you could tell it's a cousin. It's sort of like the it's a it's a I don't want to say a, a knockoff or a flanker. It's it's a cousin of the original brute, but it stands on its own as like a beautiful barbershoppy vibe. I mean, th because of the the composition of the different notes, you know, it's got all the notes we all love: the lavender, the the langulane, geranium, the jasmine, the sandal, the vetiver, the oak moss. These are all notes that all of us in this genre who are watching this video love that that kind of formulation. This is an this for me is is like an all star, super lavender heavy as well, off the top. I mean, this is, if you like barbershop scents, you are going to love this. So let me spend some time with this. I'll come back and I'll share my observations. Okay, I am back and I have some great observations to share about the dry down, the projection, the longevity, the charm, and also I'm going to share my final thoughts on this scent. Okay, let's talk about the dry down. So after the first five minutes or so, give or take, as soon as I left the camera, and I keep forgetting because this happens time and time again with these Phoenix R's and accoutrements, once the alcohol uh, recedes, the scent starts to mushroom. And so what happened was I was starting to get a lot more of that floral heart, particularly the ylang, -ylang and the, the jasmine, the geranium, started to come much, much more to the forefront. And also the powderiness started to become much, much more obvious. So after about one hour in, I'm getting in the air this really powdery lavender-like accord off of the skin. You get a little bit more of the floral, but really in the air, you're just getting like like talky, powdery, lavender-like smell. And it's really, really nice. It really morphs into this barbershop scent. I would say compared to the vintage Fabergé Brut, the powder to floral ratio is higher in the Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, whereas in the vintage Brut, the floral ratio is much, much higher. So this is uh, quite powdery. It's very, very nice. So two hours in, it kind of hits its final form as far as the blend and you're still getting this really really nice powdery lavender like smell there is like some geranium hiding behind the lavender where it's not really showing its face but it's contributing its floralness to it if that makes sense so it modifies the lavender a little bit and also uh, in contrast to the Fabergé Brut this one you can actually smell a little bit of the base uh, of the kind of the vetiver woodiness that it's not a massive vetiver woodiness it's not enough to say like hey that's a nice vetiver or that's a nice woods it just modifies the lavender powdery smell and gives it a little bit of a masculine vibe now the Vabergé the vintage one is much much more floral and it's really spearheaded by that ylang ylang again if you haven't seen my review on the vintage Fabergé go check it out I share a lot of really interesting tidbits in that video about the vintage one. Okay, let's talk about the quality of the smell. Just as I've come to respect, appreciate, and adore from Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, and one of the reasons I am falling in love with this house is the quality of the smell is just through the roof. It's the, the naturals they're using, it's so nice. Now, let me talk a little bit about the ingredients. I forgot to mention that in the first opening clip. It's worth noting, so you have alcohol, you have lavender hydrosol, you have essential fragrance oil, you have aloe vera, and a non-animal source liquid silk. That's it. It's, it just smells so crisp, clean, and fresh. Okay, so projection and performance. So this is also pretty much in line with the rest of them. This is a, has a really nice prominent sun bubble for the first two to three hours. That doesn't include spraying it on the clothes, which I didn't have a chance to this time. Nice uh, bubble for two to three hours. After that, it starts to come a little bit closer, but it's still very nice. It's still a respectable bubble. This isn't like thick, like like a perfume or like the vintage one. It doesn't have that um, that punch to it, but it's got this very beautiful sort of light, elegant, classy, wispy smell to it, where it's not dominating your nose. This is very much an accentuator. In the first two to three hours, it's it walks the line between accentuator and a definer, where definer is like, this is, it kind of announces you a little bit, where accentuator is like, you get it as you're moving around, it kind of blends with your aura. It, it's kind of a mix of both. It, it After the first two to three hours, it comes more to the accentuator, but it's, again, it's not a skin scent. This is a really nice projection, a one that I really have come to love and appreciate from them. 
It's classy, it's elegant, very gentlemanly, and I like it like that. So let's talk about the longevity. Longevity, depending on your skin chemistry, you're gonna be getting six to eight to even 10 hours this more. I have worn some of the Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements that I was getting at, at the 10 hour mark, I was still smelling them as not even a skin scent. It was still giving me a nice, a decent little projection. So these are kind of sneaky. I've actually had a pro, uh, an issue with them before, not issue, but I actually went nose blind to one before and I thought, oh, this is gone after the first few hours. But then I, then like at the five or six hour mark, I started smelling again because I had gone nose blind to it. So don't sleep on these. While they have a, a lighter concentration at an aftershave EDC, so this guy says, these perform for me like EDTs. So I, I, I totally respect these and they're really, really great for that. So projection longevity is very, very nice. Okay, let's talk about the charm. Okay, so while this has all the same notes as Brute, this is not Brute, but this is a textbook barbershop smell. It has all the right feelers. It has the powderiness, it has the lavender dominated floral, and it has that slightly woody vetiver masculine undertone that really masculinizes the powderiness, but without being overbearing. It scratches the barbershop itch and then some. And that's sort of the X factor of this smell. It's a very pleasant, textbook barbershop smell that's relaxed and casual it's youthful and it's got this nice kind of like cool dad smell to it that's the charm so that segues into let's talk about the personification of this okay this is a guy with well, a well-groomed beard stubble or a clean shaven he's not scraggly he's wearing a nice pair of jeans or slacks with brown shoes he's got a polo pullover uh, sweatshirt with one of those zippers and the collar is up. He's in his 40s, but he can easily pass for late 30s based on how he dress, dresses and kind of his overall vibe. He's relaxed, he's well-groomed, he's masculine, and he's casual. His aura is very much dad-like. He's got that youthful but very seasoned and mature vibe to him. He's the kind of guy who can make a minivan or a station wagon look cool, but he also has that toy weekend car like a Corvette under the cover in the garage. He's very approachable. He knows how to tell dad jokes and he knows how to wrangle kids when he has to. Okay, let's talk now about my final judgments on this. What is, what is this stuff to me and would I buy this stuff? So as I mentioned, this is not brute. The, the big difference here is this is a powdery lavender-like smell with a little bit of masculine uh, base, that vetiver woodsiness. Primarily, what you're getting from this is that powdery lavender floral. I say lavender floral because, the, like I said, the geranium is hiding behind the lavender, but it's not like, hey, this is geranium. It's, it's definitely lavender up front. And a, a layman is going to get like a, a, that lavender, but there is something more to it. Now, the classic Brut Vintage Fabergé, which I'm very familiar with, is a Lang Ylang bomb. It's a very much, the floral is what it is. And because it's not Brut, I actually like that because, to be honest with you, I love the Vintage Brute. I don't need another one. I am very happy the way this sits now. Again, I mentioned it's not synthetic for me. This is a very nice, natural smelling, clean. It's elegant, it's classy, and I've really come to fall in love with Brute. I've worn it many, many times. I have two full bo I have two big bottles of this stuff. Right? I have one full one and I have a giant one that I've, I've shown, I think, in a past video. So I have backup. I love it. I plan it to be a lifetime fragrance. So that this is not Brute doesn't bother me at all because I have that. What this is, is a barbershop scent. This scratches that itch so, so well. In fact, what I would do is I would, I would like to buy this stuff and layer it on top of the Vintage Brute because this gives a little bit more powdery stuff. And what I was doing before with the Vintage Brute is layering on Pinot Clubman, but the Clubman has a syntheticness to it that I just don't like. It, it makes my, my sinuses hurt for some reason, something in that. And this also has the same notes as the vintage, so it doesn't compromise, it doesn't change the way it smells, it just adds to it, that powderiness. It also can work as a standalone. Like I said, this is like that super casual, clean, relaxed, you're not trying to like prove yourself, you're not trying to necessarily attract the opposite sex, you're kind of just in your own, you're kind of just in this like dad vibe, you're just chilling, man. You have this nice uh, powdery masculine fragrance on. It's very, very pleasant. It's very friendly. It's fresh. It's clean. It's very, very nice standalone fragrance. So the versatility of this stuff, seasons, again, this is another one from Phoenix Arcuncha, which are fast for me becoming this 
These, they're like freshies. While they perform better than freshies, they're classic in the formulation, but because of the naturals that they use, they come off as freshies and they're very unique freshies. Most freshies are very like, you know, you have the citrusy, uh, generally the citrusy uh, bergamot style freshies. These are like, you get the best of both worlds with the, the full body classic style scents, but they also have the freshness. So this is a really nice freshie that you can wear in any season. I, I, today is like late, late fall, early winter here in Portland. It works in the cold. It, it's going to work in the summer. It's going to work in the spring. It's going to work at any time. Circumstances. This isn't like probably one that you're going to want to wear in like a date night type of scent. This is going to be a very nice one I would personally wear it for. I would love to wear this as my as a nice daytime scent. It's got a nice, nice amount of longevity and projection that will take me into the evening time when usually I like to rotate my scent anyways. But if I wanted to wear it all day, I easily could. Um, so versatility, I think you're going to get daytime scent. Evening scent could work, but you maybe want to go with maybe a little something more uh, rich and full body for evening. It just depends. If you're just chilling at home on the couch watching TV or any any kind of relaxed, casual, non-formal uh, situation, this is a great one. It's, it, it feels very, very relaxing wearing this. It just, if you ever smell barbershop scents, you know what I'm talking about. That's why people love barbershop scents. There's something about them that's very comforting. So it really any seasons, circumstances, anything casual, non-formal, relaxed. This is definitely a masculine scent because of the powderiness particularly and because of the slight masculine base. This is definitely a masculine scent. But if you're a female who maybe has liked barbershop scents in the past, you could pull it off. It's not like macho masculine. It's definitely masculine, but it's not like... It's not like civet castorium uh, masculine, if you know what I mean. It's not like that. So this could, you know, theoretically could go, go both ways, but it's definitely a masculine scent when you smell it in the air. Mature versus young. Um, I think I'd put this one in a, the slightly mature. This is like uh, 30s, 40s, 50s or higher kind of scent. Could a young guy wear this? 100% young guy can wear this. Um, I think they could pull it off. They maybe have to have a little bit of a, of a seasonness to a little mature vibe and aura. Um, but if you like barbershop scents and you're a young guy, you are going to like this. In fact, if you like barbershops in general, this is one you're going to want to get your nose on and sample. Um, I do think it is blind buy worthy if you're someone who's already established as liking barbershop scents. This is literally for me to my nose is like textbook barbershop scent. You cannot go wrong. It's, it's a dumb reach for barbershop lovers. Okay, so wrap up in conclusion. I am planning on buying this. This is going in the top for me with... Uh, this is going to sit next to Club Guy. These two, I think, are both fantastic barbershop ones from this house. So this is on my buy list. I do plan on getting it. I would love to be able to get the deodorant from this as well because the vintage Fabergé Brut, you're not getting a deodorant for that. I would love to get the Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements deodorant for this and also maybe the soap as well. So I definitely do plan on uh, buying it. I do recommend it and I, I love it. I really do. I, I just... This Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements house, if I can just get on my soapbox for just one second... I am so impressed. This house, don't sleep on this house. They're not totally well known in the fragrance community to what, from what I have seen yet. They probably will be soon. Do not sleep on this house. If you like classic masculine scents, if you like natural smelling scents, the, once you go to this house and you start smelling other stuff, you may find that your nose just appreciates these natural classic styles. They're so, so nice. So don't sleep on this house. You can get these samples for a dollar. That reminds me of the value of this stuff, 26 bucks for 100 mil. It's, the value is insane. You can overspray this and you don't, not only you can overspray it, not have to worry about budget, but you can overspray it because it's not like uh, overbearing. It is a nice, solid, respectable sun bell, but this is not one that's gonna like be polarizing or it's so thick and, and that people either have to love it or hate it, or you know, they have to love it to be in your aura or if they don't, they're just gonna hate you. It's not like that at all. It's very nice. Nobody's going to say anything bad about this. It's just so clean. The natural is so nice. So in conclusion, would you buy this scent? Have you tried this scent before? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. And look, what did you like about this review? What didn't you like? What would you like to see more? Please share in the comments below. And finally, if you have any questions for me, I've had requests for a Q&A video. I am compiling them. Share a question if you have anything to do about fragrances or just about me in general, whatever you think of. Leave a comment below and I will note it. Thank you for watching as always and make sure waft kindness to others.